Well, Michael, I'm looking forward to doing the uh, the video with you today. It's a little bit of a new experience, I think, for both of us. And uh, let's see how it how it works out. And uh, today we want to talk about data governance. Yeah. And yeah. It's really nice to be talking with you about that because I'm hearing a lot about data governance and I kind of think I understand what it's about, but I'm not entirely sure. So perhaps we can we can cover some of what's involved with that. Um, and I guess really a good place to start off is why are we hearing so much about it and why does it matter? Yeah, I'm starting to see a lot of it kind of pop up in like my news feeds, but also in conversations with clients. And I mean, it ranges. I get very specific targeted articles and then I also get very general questions. But yeah, I guess trying to figure out exactly what data governance is uh, it can be uh, difficult, but we'll get into it. I think kind of the reason why we're starting to hear more about it recently is because for a long time, we've been focused on, hey, we need to be data driven. Let's get the analytics out there. And then we start looking at the numbers. And now we start to ask some questions. And so we start to ask, well, are these numbers correct? Can we trust these numbers? We even start seeing regulations coming out. And then we have to start asking ourselves, can we even look at this data? Or is everyone allowed to look at this data? Only a certain set of people able to look at this. And then also you start hearing about, maybe there's some lapse in regulations and rules and people start leaving USB sticks full of data on a bus seat somewhere. That makes the headlines. And so now we start seeing that like, hey, there is a term to kind of cover all of this and that is data governance and so i think we're starting to see it because some of these issues and regulations are starting to pop up and we're starting to be a bit more credulous about the type of data that we're seeing and then also we have more purpose-built tools to cover these types of things and so then they're also marketing it and also writing articles on it so i think a lot of this starts to play into the reason why we're starting to see or hear a lot more about data governance. Yeah, it almost sounds like we've been so successful in driving self-service. There's so much data, so much information out there, and it's become so critical. Um, it, it, it's just got to, it's almost like the pendulum is swinging uh, back the other way. Right. To saying, oh, you know, we've yeah. created the Wild West here and we need to get it under control. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a really good point. I do think there is a lot to be said about um, you know that's been driven by the self-service point I think it's a really good point yeah yeah i think so um so data governance uh covers a lot of aspects doesn't it you've mentioned a couple of them i think uh, just just now but um you know i think uh, i've got a few ideas about what you'd have to look at to, to do this well um but if you if you you know if we had to put a couple of headlines together to say what does what does it encompass what is it really um, are we able to define a few kind of chapters a few issues that really kind of come to the fore? Yeah, um, it's a big question. Um, I guess if you're trying to sum it up in one sentence, it, it revolves around making sure that the right people have the right access to the right data so this That's covers way of putting it yeah like yeah it. and it, we have to think about you know access and compliance uh, making sure that we're compliant with the regulations that are out there maybe not just in our own country but then also in other countries and what requirements they have so yeah, I think that's probably a good umbrella statement, but then I think there's a lot of things that fall underneath of it. So regulation is definitely one of it, but then you also have kind of access is a big part of it and not just access, but also discoverability. Let's say that you're trying to build a dashboard or you need to find a table out there. If you can't find that table, then there's a chance that you might end up asking somebody to recreate the table. Then now we have duplicate tables. Maybe it's created in slightly different matter so that 
Now we have slightly different numbers. Now we have an issue of which one do we actually trust? So I think all of this kind of falls underneath this umbrella of data, data governance. That's a really good point. You know, some of the clients that I've worked with, I think they struggle with getting the balance right between protecting the data and giving yeah. people the flexibility to work. You know, I've seen uh, in organizations a lot of effort going into security and who can access what. And then, you know, they go ahead and download the data into Excel and all of that yeah. is gone, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you, you don't want to make the governance so tight that nobody can actually discover anything and nobody can actually work with it. And sometimes you do need to, you, know, you do need to do ad hoc analytics perhaps and, uh, you know, discover different things. So I, I guess getting that balance right is, um, is, is a challenge. Yeah, and I'd say it's probably an ongoing process. You might be able to set up some data governance policies now, uh, but I wouldn't say that they're going to be true and applicable three months, six months, or a year from now. Your organization grows, the type of data you're ingesting differs, uh, the roles that you have are going to change. So yeah, I think you're gonna have to constantly be watching this. There is a principle out there that's called like the principle of least privilege. And it's where you start off, hey, here's the bare minimum of access that you need. But as we go on, if we have a good process in place, you should be able to request that person who's approving the request should feel comfortable in being able to say yes or no. And then that process goes forward. It's not always that clear cut in every situation, but that's something that you should strive for. And I guess uh, as well as uh, kind of giving access so you can see it or you can't see it, uh, another approach is, uh, is to use masking, isn't it? It's a really good point. There are a lot of different methods to do this. So let's say um, you need access to a table that has some personal identifiable information from uh, clients or customers, but we don't want to share those numbers and those addresses with developers and analysts. There's some really good technology out there. It's built into some of these applications that can give you access to that table. But when you look at that data, that data is masked or it's scrambled so that you can't actually see that personally identifiable piece of information. So yeah, it's a really good point. There are some good features out there that we can use. Yeah, I think another thing, you know, we've focused a lot on the security, protecting the data, protecting people's privacy uh, side of governance. To me, another piece of it is all about uh, making data discoverable, right? We want people to use the systems that we've invested in. We want to get value for money through those investments. But if I don't know something is there, I'm not going to use it. Or if I can't find it, I'm not going to use it. So I, I guess that that's a piece of uh, good data governance or at least data management too, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, and that's where a lot of these tools have started to become more and more popular. You start hearing about tools like data catalog tools, and that's tools like Atlan or data.world, Informatica, Cube even has a semantic layer for it. And that's where we can start to add some of this really important metadata that can be searched with inside of the, these tools that we can then start to see the discoverability about it. But on top of that, we can start adding some really important context to all of these sources of data or these dashboards so that we can then start to learn more about, hey, what are the values in this table? What is the actual definition of uh, sales per week? I mean, are we also looking at the cost of the products? So we need to understand really what we're looking at. And on top of that, some really cool stuff is being able to see the lineage of that data. Where is that data coming from in another table? How has that been joined up with uh, other data from another table to get our end result. That lineage and being able to understand that is extremely useful and I think really helps us understand what we're actually working with at the end of the day. That's a really good point, yeah, because I guess that uh, if you're working on something, you want to know what you what you might break downstream, right? <laughs> yeah, 
that, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, right? Yeah, if I if I change the name of this column, you know, what will break coming down? Uh, yeah, it's a really good point. Yeah, it's much better to know that in, in, in advance rather than break something or wait for the screens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll find out about it maybe in a day or maybe in an hour. But yeah, you'll find out about it eventually. So yeah. someone will come to you. But uh, being able to, you know, look at it before you do it, I mean, that's obviously the way that you want to go. Yeah, and I think as well, having a good view of what's out there helps enormously too because it's uh, it's so easy and when you want to de you know, develop something everybody's in a hurry right so if i need to develop something i'm not going to spend a lot of time searching for existing materials i'm going to get going and when i've finished it there's often not enough time to spend time to document it you know write up yeah. what i've done and make it easily uh, maintainable so um you know, I guess uh, a lot of duplication starts coming in and then you get problems with consistency and, uh, yeah. and there you go, right? That's right there. Yeah, and there's some good tools out there that will help you with AI, will help you with your documentation. Um, you also are able to see if you're starting to do duplicate things. Uh, we've seen a tool like Tableau Pulse where I start to create a metric there. As soon as I say, hey, here's a metric I want to create, I get a warning saying, hey, someone's already created that exact same configuration. It'll take me to it. And I actually really love that uh, feature uh, so that we just don't get all of these duplicate metrics. But uh, yeah, I think it's a important piece. And you're right, uh, documentation is often, you know, not the thing people want to do the most, but there are some enthusiasts in this world. And I bet that there's some in every single organization that are, this is really important to them. And these are the people we need to identify. Uh, those are the ones that you want to champion. You want to get them involved in the project, give them the uh, kind of responsibility to promote it, how to bring others in, to kind of maintain and monitor it. There are people that really enjoy this topic and uh, finding them and getting them to manage the whole environment is extremely powerful. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's a very good point. So I suppose you know, we covered a, a number of things that you need to think about um, very closely related to that. Um, are we able to define sort of two or three best practices to keep in mind? I, I think you kind of talked about one already, which is the idea of giving the, the least level of privilege needed and, and then escalating up. Yeah, uh, I are, think are there you know, others that we could expand on or, or that one. Is that one worth expanding on? Yeah, I think starting small and starting simple is a good way to go. And then caveating that with, this won't be the end all be all of our policy. So the first one, definitely start small, definitely start simple, and then build and tailor as you grow. And then That's that really will- That's a thing, isn't it? Because yeah. if, you, if you give somebody access or you give somebody permissions and you then decide you've gone too far, it's very hard to pull that back in, right? You usually end up upsetting people or breaking stuff again. So yeah, yeah it's better to start small and then give. I agree yeah. with that. So that's a big part of it. A second part of it is like we were just talking about earlier, uh, find that community, find that community who is really passionate about data governance and get them involved in this type of project and get them spreading the word and talking to others. Uh, have them act as stewards. It doesn't mean that they have to end up controlling and writing all the documentation, but they're the ones that can follow up with peers about getting more documentation. So finding those champions and getting that buy-in, I think is extremely important. Do you know, I like the way you've uh, you've mentioned people as well, because this isn't just a tech subject, is it? It's definitely no. about people and culture. Yeah. Uh, just anecdotally, uh, you know, documentation isn't always, it isn't always the analyst that doesn't want to do it. I, I actually had the experience of uh, working with an analyst that very much wanted to document the projects, but the management just wouldn't give them time. They said, no, 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 we'll do that. We'll do that later. Manana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you build up this technical debt, right? I, I love the term yeah. technical debt. <laughs> yeah, right. I I can't tell you the amount of times I've gone into building or developing something. I got it working. I was on a deadline and finally it's working. It's out there and I'm very happy about it. Only to be asked to come back to it a month later 
change a few things. And I look at it, I go, I, I, I don't know why I was doing it this way. <laughs> I didn't leave myself any breadcrumbs to follow back. <laughs> and, Who wrote uh, this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it's just, uh, I, it's extremely important to get it in there. And whether that's through a simple, you know, just uh, docs that we keep in a shared folder somewhere, or whether it's a robust system that can help you with AI and make sure that you have documentation. Either or is fun. And like you said, it this is more around methodology. It's not around tooling. There are tools to help, but having a good knowledge base is definitely a key piece of this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, I agree with that. That's definitely been my experience too. So if we... Yeah, we've talked a lot about what it is and, and best practices. If if I'm interested in that, why might I talk to Interworks? Why might I come out to uh, to guys like ourselves and uh, and look for help? I mean, it all sounds pretty obvious, right? Pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, uh, depending on your tech stack and your organization, you might be able to handle this in-house. There's a ton of good articles out there that will help you get started in the right direction. Uh, I think there's even a few white papers out there. But if you're in the position where we feel like our stack is too complex, or I don't know where to start, or I want to start, we have people who are passionate, we just need some help getting started. That's where we can help out. And again, data governance is going to cover your entire flow of data from when you connect and ingest it transform it, store it, push it downstream to analytics and BI tools. It has to cover that whole gambit. So uh, we can help out with any part of that journey, or we can also help out with the whole journey. If you'd like to do a health check on your governance policies in your data warehouse, we can help you with that. If you'd like to map out what it looks like end to end, and you need some of this strategy and mapping that out and getting that vision set, we can also help out with that. Or you might have already decided, hey, we're gonna go full in on this. We have a tool, um, but we don't really know where to start. We don't have the best practices. We can also get you started with that. So there's a couple of different ways that we can help. Yeah, you know, it strikes me as, uh life as a consultant we work with so many different organizations different sizes different uh, levels of maturity different um, areas that they're working in you know you think about pharmaceuticals healthcare where security is really very very uh, critical and other areas where it's still critical but maybe not quite to the same extent or you know, larger organizations that really have to cope with tens of thousands of users or uh, you know a small uh, a smaller startup that's working with a handful of people in yeah. an office we cover all of that and i think the nice thing is we see so many different ways of approaching it uh, we see uh, we benefit from all that experience that's out there working with different organizations I think something we can bring to the party is ideas that you may not come up, you know, you may not have yourself. I think everybody kind of works on their yeah. own bit, their own, they're familiar with their own kind of data, their own kind of industry, their own. And there may be things going on in totally other areas, non-related areas that would be beneficial. And sometimes yeah. I think we cross pollinate like that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You might see a strategy that's very common in a manufacturing industry and be able to bring that into retail very easily. So uh, yeah, I think it's a great point. All right. Well, anybody listening to this, uh, I hope we've inspired you to, uh, you know, to take another look at data governance. And if you would like to talk to us, we'd certainly love hearing from you. And Michael, uh, thank you very much for a really yeah, interesting conversation today. Yeah, fantastic. Really enjoyed it. Yeah.